Colossal science meets bold vision, to say the least, as collaborative tech and genetics take on the impossible, reviving extent, extinct species. Excuse me, from dodos to direwolves, Colossal Biosciences is leading the de extinction revolution. And Ben Lamb joins us now. Ben is the founder of Colossal Biosciences. Ben, thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So if you could first take us back to the beginning, the genesis of this, I guess it kind of in, with, in more ways than one, uh, what sparked the idea for Colossal and your journey into de-extinction? Well, this is really the vision of Dr. George Church, who leads genetics at Harvard. He's, you know, seen as the father of synthetic biology. And he had this vision that we could bring back extinct species, help ecosystems, build technologies that help human healthcare and help conservation all while inspiring kids. And as an entrepreneur that's always wanted to make massive impact with businesses that I built, who who thought that like there's not a bigger challenge in the world that you know you could be presented with. And so George really was the kind of spark that got this uh, project going. What is de-extinction and how does it actually work? So de-extinction is using computational biology, genetic engineering, and AI to basically rebuild extinct species for today, taking ancient DNA, doing all the comparative genomics of their closest living relatives, and then using tools like CRISPR and others to engineer them into uh, the closest living relatives. So we do a lot of AI, we do a lot of comparative genomics, and then we use precision editing to bring back these lost traits and genes that have been gone for thousands of years. Ben, I'm sure you've been asked this question many times. This is my, this is the lay person's understanding. Jurassic Park, the block of amber, <laughs> the mosquito, we extract, now we got dinosaurs. How close is that to reality or how far off am I? It's so weird. We've never heard the Jurassic Park comparison ever. This is, you're the world's first. It's amazing. <laughs> first, first one ever? Got it. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, what's crazy, it's very close to Jurassic Park. Now, there is no dino DNA. Amber's a, a very porous material, so we're not going to have dinosaurs running around anytime soon. But it's very similar where you take ancient DNA, you extract it from bone and teeth and other things like you do in the amber. You do all that comparison, all that 3D modeling they did. And just like Mr. DNA taught us, we fill in the holes and change those letters. So what Jurassic Park did other than entertain us and scare us a little bit, uh, it did inspire this revolution of genome engineering, and it actually taught people the basics of what we do. Dire Wolf revival efforts. What else is the company actively working on? And, and sort of give us a, a bit of a peek behind the curtain to, to Oz. How does it actually work and how is it going? Yeah. It's going quite well. You know, we we, uh, we we kind of broke the internet when we showed the world the the first woolly mice where we'd engineer traits from mice, uh, from mammoths into mice. And then uh, it went so crazy. We're like, wow, people are going to lose their minds over our dire wolves, which they did. Uh, and so, you know, we birthed three dire wolves uh, uh, last year and they're about to celebrate their first year birthday. They're doing fantastic. Uh, they're about 120 pounds or significantly bigger than wolves and they're amazing. Uh, we're also, we just announced a major breakthrough for the the Dodo project. So we had a big gating step that, you know, we didn't know how long it was going to take to overcome it. We were confident that we would, but we did. And now the Dodo, the Dodo bird is on track to be back in the next five years, which is really exciting. And then obviously most people know us about our flagship project, our woolly mammoth, which we're still on track for late 2028 for our first mammoth calves if everything continues to go well. So all projects are in the editing phase. We're full system ahead. So we're not looking in the amber, if you will. We're in that editing phase. So then after five years, we can no longer say fill in the blank here went the way of the dodo. Exactly. We can say undead as a dodo. Where the, the dire wolves, where, where are they? And for people wondering kind of where, where you kind of mostly do your work and, and base your, your core products out of. So we have our core lab in uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, we have a set, we have Colossal Australia in Melbourne, uh, Australia, which actually is about 60 people. We've had a, a, a little over 250 people total working at the company. Uh, and then we work with 17 academic labs all over the world uh, that we fund different postdocs. We have about 80 postdocs in the world. Uh, our dire wolves, given the excitement of the woolly mice, we had a, a couple of uh, uh, unrequested visitors to our lab that were so excited about the mice. We, we haven't shared the location of the dire wolves, but they're on a 2,000 acre uh, American Humane certified, USDA certified, a uh, facility uh, that's a secure, expansive ecological preserve in the northern United States. And we constantly give updates online, and we're about to show the world a big update uh, with their uh, first birthday, which is coming up on October 1st. What is the scientific and environmental importance or the impact 
you think of of uh, of this work? It's a great question, right? Because we think about value creation, inspiration for kids and teachers and whatnot in science and STEM. We also think about impact. And so all of the technologies that we make on the path to de extinction that don't have an application to human healthcare that can be applied to conservation, we just open source for free. And so when we made the dire wolves, three dire wolves, we actually made four red wolves, which is the most uh, endangered wolf in the entire world. It's only endemic to the United States. There's only about 15 left in the wild, and we made four. And so we're able to use these technologies for conservation, and we actually stood up a foundation with $50 million of funding uh, that's separate from our capital, and we actually have 60 conservation partners that are using our technologies from everything from red wolves to vaquita to the northern white rhino. And we're in an extinction crisis, so we're going to lose up to 50% of all biodiversity in the next 25 years. So we think that our de-extinction path not only brings awareness to this issue, but it also can apply technologies to conservation, which we just open source. What are the ethical or ecological considerations you and the team have to consider uh, as a guide of your work? It's a great question. We spend a lot of time on the ethics. We work closely with indigenous people groups, private landowners, governments, the public at large on education. And we also spend a lot of time when we're looking to rewild the species, like the thylacines, the mammoths, the dodos or whatnot, in country. So we actually develop in country working groups with all these people, including ecologists and conservationists, so that we can build models for ecosystem restoration. Because we know when we put animals back into the wild that have been uh, removed from that environment by uh, human causes, it actually improves the ecosystem. But it's a very thoughtful, measured process that we have to go through with an entire ethical board and a conservation board that has to sign off on every single step. And Ben, looking ahead to next year, 2026, any milestones that lie ahead for Colossal and uh, yes. anything you're working on you could fill us in on? Yeah, so I think that next year, uh, you know, I think that we'll we'll set some new records in genome engineering. You know, the two most genetically modified multicellular organisms of the world were made by Colossal. I think we'll break that again next year. So I think we'll set a new uh, uh, piece there. I'd love for our, you know, we do have an artificial womb team, which sounds still like sci-fi. De-extinction doesn't sound like sci-fi to me anymore, but artificial wombs do. I think that we'll show a lot of progress on our artificial womb work, hopefully next year, which I think would be another world's first, which is pretty exciting. And then I think we'll just continue to give up updates as we get to the next animals. I don't know if we'll have a new species next year. Only time will tell. Um, but there could be a new species in 2026 or 2027, which would be exciting. Ben, I got to be honest. I have done many interviews in my long career as a news broadcaster. I have never spoken to someone who has had to say the sentence, we might have a new species next. And maybe it's something we're working on. I don't know. Time will tell. Uh, before I let you go, one takeaway you want viewers to most know, most understand about Colossal's ongoing mission. Yeah, I, I, we had a lot of headlines for de-extinction and it brings a lot of people in from an excitement and a kids and education perspective. But I want to make people understand that like these tools and technologies are being applied today to save animals like the northern coal, uh, the northern white rhino, Asian elephants. We actually developed a vaccine uh, in partnership with Baylor College of Medicine, which uh, 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 cures a disease that kills 20% of elephants, more than poaching, more than anything. And so these technologies, while exciting and maybe a little scary at times, they are being applied today to conservation. And that's something that's so near and dear to our core mission that sometimes gets lost in the headlines. Ben Lamb is the founder of Colossal Biosciences, doing some incredibly exciting things, to say the least. Ben, thanks a lot for taking the time. It's great to have you today. Yeah, thanks so much.